What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, if you were paying attention to the tech world this week, Microsoft had the best tech keynote we've seen this entire year. What? That's right. I said it. The best keynote of the year. Their standout products were a direct shot at Apple with the Surface Pro and Surface Book. Now, the Surface Pro 4 is bringing Skylake processors alongside their true desktop OS. Their Surface Pen can magnetically attach to their tablet, and the opposite side of the pen can be used like an eraser. How clever is that? See, that's one of those charming things that you would never thought of that Apple used to do when SJ was around. The iPad Pro just brings a bigger screen size and their pencil. Still sounds like a stylus to me, Brian. Yes, Charlie, I know. Thank you for that. And even Microsoft's head of Windows and Devices, Tyler Meyerson, sent a shot out to Apple and Tim Cook with his tweet of a toaster and a refrigerator. See, that's a callback to April 2012 when Tim Cook offered his opinion on the tablet laptop hybrid and said, you can converge a toaster and a refrigerator, but those things are probably not going to be pleasing to the user. You know, I would honestly like an actual refrigerator toaster, Tim. And the Surface Pro 4, let's talk about this, is amazing. But let me be real. Even though I want one, all my music and movies and TV shows are in the Apple ecosystem, I'm still getting an iPad Pro, and I'll love it, but I just know that the Surface Pro 4 is a superior product. And then, you can't deny that the Surface Book, Microsoft's first ever laptop that they designed and built in-house, is one of the most innovative products of 2015. They built a laptop with a screen that pops off and becomes its own clipboard, and then you can also flip it and reverse it, just like Missy Elliott said, it's your it's your to use as a canvas with twice the power of the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, if you love tech and you wanna see innovation, look at what Microsoft just did. Apple will probably sell more iPads and MacBooks combined, but Microsoft just kicked Apple in their you know what's, and that's real talk. So, what does Apple have up its sleeve or, you know, maybe on its fingers? Well, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office published a patent application from Apple for their next potential wearable. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the one Apple ring to rule them all. This is for real, and the Apple ring is described as a wearable computer that would incorporate touch-sensitive surfaces, gesture sensors, voice input recognition, a camera, a microphone, and more. The application says the Apple Ring could be used with a smart TV and act like a pointer on an external display. It could also be wirelessly charged in your car by a smart steering wheel. Buy an Apple car and in 2020, you can wirelessly charge your Apple Ring. See, this thing is already more useful than the Apple Watch. <laughs> I'm kidding, kind of. Now, this doesn't mean they're actually going to do this, but look at those drawings. Do you realize how huge that ring would have to be? It's like wearing an Apple Watch on a single finger, and yes, it would still look big if you have fat sausage fingers. And who's going to be the first person that does a marriage proposal with this Apple ring? Probably one of you watching. All right, in products that you can actually buy, Apple announced the new Beats Pill Plus wireless Bluetooth speaker will be available in November for 229 bucks. Their new Pill Plus is equipped with both lightning and USB ports for charging, and most importantly, brings improved sound that's louder, has more clarity, and brings tighter bass from the original based on CNET's own first impressions. Now, using the app, you can wirelessly pair two Pill Plus speakers for stereo sound, and two users can also connect their smartphones and alternate playing music in a DJ mode that you've seen from other companies as well. And this week marks the fourth anniversary of Steve Jobs' passing, and it's also the week that the Aaron Sorkin-written movie Steve Jobs releases nationwide. The movie has received praise from critics, but that hasn't necessarily been the case from the people closest to SJ. Now, Tim Cook criticized the number of recent Steve Jobs biopics on The Stephen Colbert Show and called them opportunistic. Sorkin fired back with, if you've got a factory full of children in China assembling phones for 17 cents an hour, you've got a lot of nerve calling someone else opportunistic. Sorkin later apologized to Tim Cook saying, both of them probably went a little too far. People close to Jobs like Steve Wozniak Andy Hertzfeld and John Scully agree that the film does take a lot of liberties with the facts, but Wozniak liked the film. Hertzfeld said it exposes some deeper truths, and Scully says it's extraordinary entertainment that depicts only one aspect of the man. The Wall Street Journal reports Steve Jobs' widow, Lorene Powell Jobs, repeatedly tried to block production of the movie, 
because it portrayed Jobs as cruel and inhumane. She was offered to be involved with development, but she declined. Now, I'm excited to see this movie, and I will, after I sneak in a couple of spam musubis after a good day on the beach in Hawaii next week. So just in case there's no show, you'll know why, and don't complain to me on Twitter. All right, that's going to do it. Email me at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll respond if I get a signal on the top of Cocoa Head. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple. Aloha!